It's easy to fall asleep when sitting through the credits of a big new release, just to see if there's something past the credits. So many people work on each detail, that it's getting harder to imagine that it's possible for one person to make a game. However, I want to change that with the top 10 games made by one person. The Minecraft we know today, of course, is a massive property handled by Mojang, which is now owned by Microsoft. The original Minecraft Alpha, first shown way back in 2009 however, was a sandbox game developed solely by Marcus Person, also known as Notch. He envisioned a game similar to Dwarf Fortress, Dungeon Keeper and Infiniminer, one that would both have focus on 3D building and RPG elements. And it was a success. Notch continued to update and expand Minecraft and finally founded Mojang. This indie studio was no longer a one-man effort and it turned Minecraft into the powerhouse it is today. Minecraft in its current form may not have been made by a single person, but that's the way it started out. Although other people handle the soundtrack and voice acting, the design, art and programming of the action RPG Dust and Lysian Tale is the sole product of Dean Dodrill. He originally envisioned it as an 8-bit platformer inspired by Castlevania and estimated he could make it in 3 months, but it turned into a beautiful 2D RPG that took over 3 years to develop. The main character is an anthropomorphic animal named Dust, who wields a sentient sword called the Blade of Ara. With no memory of his past, Dust sets out on a search for his identity, and finds himself part of a much larger quest. Its Castlevania inspirations can still be seen in its gameplay, along with influence from games like Golden Axe and the Wise series. Dust and Elysian Tale came out in 2012 to high praise and has since been released on multiple systems, with even a limited physical edition earlier this year. It may one day receive a sequel, although Dodrill expressed his wish to work on other things first. In 2013, indie developer 3909 released Papers, Please, a dystopian thriller about an immigrations officer who determines which people can and can't enter Archstotska. 3909 is a development studio made of one man, Lucas Pope, who formerly worked for Naughty Dog. Pope came up with the idea for the game based on his experiences with immigration, and used an open source programming language and framework to create the game in 9 months. Since the majority of the game is about checking people's papers and investigating them to determine if you should allow them into the country or not, some people found Papers, Please to be tedious. Most, however, appreciated it for its design, choice-driven gameplay, and pacing. It was a great success, and all the more impressive for being from one person. Lone Survivor is a 2012 survival horror game developed by Superflat Games, which consists of Jasper Byrne. It is a 2D game with retro-style graphics, inspired by survival horror classics like Silent Hill 2. You play as a man who survived a plague that transformed people into monsters. On a search for other survivors, and guided by hallucinations, you must contend with enemies, puzzles, and your own sanity. Since resources are limited, players need to manage their actions carefully, and the sanity system adds an additional element of risk versus reward. Lone Survivor has three possible endings. Your actions during the game determine which you receive. Lone Survivor was well received by survival horror fans, especially fans of the Silent Hill series, and it later received a director's cut that added more features and a new game plus mode. The director's cut also had two additional endings, both of which are only possible to achieve in a subsequent playthrough. Thomas Was Alone is the puzzle platformer that will make you develop an emotional attachment to rectangles. It was created by one person. After a 24 hour game jam in 2010, Mike Bithell made a minimalistic flash game about a group of polygons with different skills. In 2011, he began work on an expanded version that would include new gameplay elements and a story. 
He added humour and gave each of the shapes a personality, got Danny Wallace to voice the narrator, and contacted David Houston to work on the soundtrack. The final game, released in 2012, was widely praised for both its puzzle platformer gameplay and its story. And of course, there's something to be said for a game that can make you love its characters, even though they're rectangles. If you've gone near the internet at all since September 2015, you've probably seen at least one reference to Undertale, the indie RPG that took the world by storm with its unique moral system, memorable characters, and sense of humour. It stars a child human who has fallen into a world of monsters, and while you can fight enemies, you can befriend them as well. Despite some criticism of its graphics, Undertale received stellar reviews and almost immediately gained a huge fan following. By early 2016, it had already sold over a million copies, and it was largely the work of one man, an indie developer named Toby Fox, who made Undertale himself. Some of the art was created by other people, and a few Kickstarter backers contributed design ideas, but Toby handled everything else. That's quite a feat, especially since both its writing and music were highly praised, and its thorough and clever programming made Undertale the phenomenon it became. Axiom Verge is a Metroidvania game greatly influenced by the classic 2D Metroid games that was first begun when Tom Happ decided to make a game in his spare time. He handled everything himself, the art, music and development, and finally released it in 2015. You play as a scientist who wakes up in an alien world and must explore, fight enemies, and solve puzzles to uncover its secrets and learn the truth. While its story is not the main focus, some players enjoyed it. Axiom Verge was highly praised for its gameplay, exploration, difficulty level and more. One of its few criticisms was that it follows Metroid a little too closely, and for fans frustrated with a lack of new 2D Metroid games, that's not much of a flaw. It was a fantastic game, one of the best indie games of 2015, and it's even more incredible when you remember it was entirely made by a single person. Daisuke Ameya wanted to make a retro, old-fashioned game and spent five years working on a PC platformer called Cave Story in his free time. It is about a character with amnesia who wakes up in a cave and soon uncovers the plot of an evil doctor who plans to force the cave's inhabitants to help him take over the world. The game came out in 2004 and was praised for its scope, gameplay and storytelling. Since then, it has been ported to numerous systems, enhanced as Cave Story Plus, with new features and an alternate script, and remade in 3D as a retail game for the Nintendo 3DS. Quite a legacy. More importantly, Cave Story was one of the first independent games to be truly popular, and it helped establish the indie game market as we know it today. The most recent game on this list came out of nowhere on February 26, 2016 and became a runaway success. Indie developer Eric Barone wanted to create a game similar to Harvest Moon series, but one that would address flaws he saw in it. He created all of its art and music and programmed the entire game himself. The result was Stardew Valley, a farming sim that has enough in common with games like Harvest Moon to appeal its fans and enough differences to stand out as unique. Stardew Valley has already sold over a million copies, making it one of Steam's best-selling games of 2016, and one of the few indie games to hit the 1 million mark in such a short period of time. Mod support has only made it more popular, and since Barone is currently working on new content and improvements to add, Stardew Valley could well become one of the most successful solo game projects of all time. The Toho Project is a series of bullet hell shoot em up games developed by Team Shanghai Alice, which, despite being a team, only has one member, a man named Zun, who does the art, music, writing, 
and programming for all the Toho games. After five predecessor games for the Japanese PC-98 computers, the first of which came out in 1996, Zun founded Team Shanghai Alice, and made the more well-known games in the series. Ten have been released since, bringing the total number of main series games up to 15. The most recent one, Legacy of Lunatic Kingdom, came out in August 2015. The Toho project takes place in the fictional realm of Gensokyo, which is sealed off from the rest of the world. The main protagonist, Reimo Hakure, is a shrine maiden who fights hostile yokai and investigates supernatural incidents. There are also several Toho games with different gameplay styles, although other developers aside from Zun contribute to these. The franchise is expanded to include CDs, manga, novels, fan books, and even fan-made anime. Unofficial fan-made Toho games are currently being brought to PlayStation console thanks to a collaboration between Sun and PlayStation. Many people want to make video games. Few create an entire franchise that runs strong for 20 years and counting. In our opinion, that makes the Toho project the number one game, or games, made by one person. I hope you enjoyed this week's list and if you did, leave a like. And if you want to see more top 10s now, click here for the top 10 games based on books or click here for the top 10 rarest PS1 games.